Hello, and thank you for your interest in our work. I'm Dr. Vijay Singh, the principal investigator, and I would love to briefly explain our study to you. My goal is to lay out its purpose, approach, and outcomes, along with the implications. Here, we study the role of intra-abdominal fat or visceral fat in worsening acute inflammation, causing organ failure, and sadly, sometimes causing death. The study shows that the main pancreatic lipase, that is PNLIP, can leak out of the damaged pancreas and cleave large amounts of abdominal fat to fatty acids. These can then cause intense systemic inflammation, organ failure, and can reduce survival. We start by comparing two common diseases, acute pancreatitis and acute diverticulitis. These are acute because both of these have a sudden onset and start with no warning. While these can resolve within a few days, acute pancreatitis can sometimes keep getting worse over days. This may cause a blood pressure drop called shock, kidney damage called renal failure, it can injure the lungs or cause changes in body temperature like in severe systemic inflammation. Failure of these systems is called multi-system organ failure and this occurs much more commonly in pancreatitis. Patients with pancreatitis or diverticulitis often present to the emergency room with belly pain. A CT scan is commonly done in this setting and often shows abdominal fat involvement called stranding around the pancreas or colon respectively. This commonly progresses to involve larger areas of fat in pancreatitis over the next several days which is rare in diverticulitis. Both these diseases sometimes require surgery to remove the inflamed or dead tissue. In diverticulitis, this is done to prevent recurrences, but in pancreatitis, this is commonly done if the patient goes into organ failure. Examining such samples, we noted intense inflammation in diverticulitis, but in pancreatitis, we uniquely noted that the fat cells were necrosed and chemically, the fat had been broken down from its normal storage form, which is called triglyceride, to fatty acids. We also noted that there was an increase in the amount and activity of pancreatic lipase in this necrosed fat from pancreatitis. This suggested that PNLIP had leaked from the damaged pancreas into the necrosed fat. Interestingly, the main adipocyte lipase, called ATGL, was not detectable in the fat of pancreatitis while it was still present in diverticulitis. In figure two, we learn that pancreatic lipase injection into visceral fat can itself hydrolyze the vis visceral fat, generate NEFA like oleic acid shown here as C181 and cause systemic inflammation and organ failure. Supplementary figure four shows the various mechanisms by which PNLIP, which is shown in red over here, can enter an adipocyte. Here we can see phospholipase A2 or PLA2 facilitating its entry into adipocytes, while PNLIP alone cannot enter these cells. We also note another lipase, PNLIPRP2, which also has a phospholipase-like activity, can damage cell membranes facilitating this entry, as can fatty acids themselves. The PNLIP-mediated generation of fatty acids like oleic acid, shown here as OA, causes organ failure. In figure three, we note that patients with severe pancreatitis and organ failure had high oleic acid levels. An injection of oleic acid triggered severe inflammation, caused renal failure, seen as an increase in BON, and caused shock, noted as a drop in carotid artery pulse distension, along with causing hypothermia and lung injury. In figure four, using a co-culture system, genetic and pharmacologic approaches to inhibit the lipases, we deduce that pancreatic lipase causes cytotoxic injury and not ATGL. In figure five, we identify PNLIP as the main pancreatic lipase 
and exclude P and LIPRP2 in mediating these phenomena. In figures six and seven, we use phenotypically similar, genetically obese mice, some of which are knockouts for P and LIP, shown in gray, while others are knockouts for ATGL, shown in blue. We induce a common model of pancreatitis in these mice called cerulean pancreatitis. While the genetic knockouts have a similar response to cerulean in terms of pancreatic edema, an increase in serum amylase, which indicates initiation of pancreatitis, the PNLIP knockout mice with pancreatitis have a specifically lowered lipase increase in their serum and also in their fat pads. This results in the PNLIP knockouts having lesser fat necrosis, shown as these cheesy white areas, along with lesser systemic inf inflammation as seen by lower cytokine levels in the serum, and prevention of renal failure, shock, and hypothermia, along with a dramatically improved survival. In supplementary figure 11, we note genetic deletion of PNLIP providing a similar protection during IL-12 and IL-18 mediated pancreatitis, which is a mechanistically different model. In figure eight, we verify that the protection by PNLIP deletion is specifically from severe inflammation and developing organ failure during pancreatitis, and that this deletion does not protect from inducing pancreatitis itself. Since the signaling induced by cerulean is not affected in P and LIP knockout mice. In summary, P and LIP can worsen visceral fat involvement and cause severe inflammation and organ failure, while in diverticulitis, in which there is a colonic perforation and leakage of stool into the fat, while it can have intense inflammation in the absence of lipolysis, this is typically self limited. And recent studies actually even go on to show that mild attacks may not even need antibiotics. However, in pancreatitis, the spillage of PNLIP from the damaged pancreas into the visceral fat can cause this fat to be broken down into non-esterified fatty acids like oleic acid, shown here in these red zigzag lines. These NIFA, or non-esterified fatty acids, can then cause severe inflammation, elevate serum cytokines, and cause multisystem organ failure. Future studies are needed about how this phenomenon may influence other diseases in this era of the obesity epidemic, and whether the FDA-approved unsaturated fats that are rich in oleic acid are necessarily better than a Western diet which has more saturated fat. I hope you find this brief introduction helpful and enjoy going through our work.